What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. This story's called, My Roommate is a Kevin, a straight up Kevin to the fullest. As is common with a lot of other Kevins you guys post in this sub, my Kevin is a good, sweet dude. He'll give you the shirt off his back without thinking twice, but this dude isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. In fact, if Kevin Kevin was an axe, he'd be so dull and blunt of an axe that she'd mistake him for being a damn sledgehammer. In any case, I have to frequently remind myself how much of a good guy Kevin is because the crap he says and does is beyond frustrating to anyone in his presence, and I don't want to come off as a butthole. I bet that a few hours spent with Kevin could give even the enlightened Lord Buddha to break into a meltdown. All those years of meditation it took to reach Nirvana down the drain. Screw being the Buddha, this is too much suffering. I need to get laid and have a smoke. Kevin needs to take out his driver's license whenever someone asks for his date of birth and he will still screw it up. My date of birth is the 4th of the 16th month uh, of 1993. So that's April 4th, 1993, right? Usually the other person just loses their patience and asks, Sir, just read me the individual numbers from left to right. Kevin has never eaten Chinese food. There's nothing wrong with that, but whatever was going on in his brain, is clearly wrong. So I was thinking about ordering some Chinese food and asked him what he wants. He tells me he doesn't like Chinese food because it's too spicy. So I was like, okay, I'll get some noodles and some beef or chicken that's not too spicy. I start naming your Chinese takeout dishes and he has no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Lo mein, pepper steak, sesame chicken, sweet and sour? Nope. I get nothing but a glassy eyed gaze from him. I ask him what he ate last time that was so spicy the dude starts naming Indian food dishes, kebabs, biryani, and stuff. And I was like, yo, Kevin, that's not Chinese food, that's Indian cuisine. And he's not having any of it. And a little argument breaks out. Turns out that the Indian restaurant is in Chinatown, so it's gotta be Chinese food, according to Kevin. He then calls a mutual friend he went to that restaurant with and puts him on speakerphone and asks him to tell me that yes, in fact, Kevin has had Chinese food and that definitely was a Chinese restaurant. Mutual friend completely loses it and starts laughing like a psycho while trying to explain to him that just because a restaurant is in Chinatown does not mean it can only have Chinese food. I lose it too and now two of us are dying of laughter. Kevin's face turns all red in anger and I could swear I saw his head swelling up ready to pop. Kevin drives for Uber and so do I as we both try to make our way in life. Now Uber deposits your earnings into your bank account automatically at the end of the week. If you want your earnings before that, you can instantly cash out. Uber takes a 50 cent fee for instant cash out. Kevin shows me that he has $1.83 in his earnings and asks me how much Uber will take if he cashes out right now. I tell him 50 cents, so if he does cash out right now, he will have $1.33 deposited in his account. Kevin says, oh my god, that's almost half of my money. Tomorrow I'm planning to make $50, so I'll cash out, then Uber will only take like $10 and give me $40. Uber is so greedy, if I cash out now, they take half of my money, but cashing out tomorrow Tomorrow, I only have to give away less than half of $50. At this point, my natural instinct is to educate this fool, but I know that if I attempt to do so, I'm entering into a world of hurt. I give it a shot. I tell him that no, no matter how much money he has in earnings, Uber will only take 50 cents for each cash out. If he cashes out now, Uber takes 50 cents from $1.83 to give him $1.33. If he cashes out tomorrow with $50, Uber will take the same 50 cents from his $50 and give him $49.50. Anyway, I try a little while longer, but his stubborn ass can't get beyond Uber taking half of his money if he cashes out right now. Although I somehow trick him to not cash out at all so Uber will take no money from him when they deposit his money at the end of the week. Kevin and I are talking about dental hygiene. We both agree that yes, brushing after every meal is a good idea and it works well to prevent cavities. Flossing? Yes, flossing is a good idea too. So far, so good. But then I pull out my bottle of mouthwash. This is where the whole crap falls apart. 
I tell him mouthwash is good too. It kills bad breath and all the germs and crap in your whole mouth, especially the parts where we don't usually brush. Kevin is like, no way, someone said to do mouthwash, but I don't do it. I never do it because it's just a way for the dentist to make more money. It has chemicals and stuff in it that messes up your teeth and helps the germs to make even bigger cavities, rotting your teeth. They want you to mess up your teeth so you can go back to them and give them your money. At this point, I'm flabbergasted as flippity doo and I ask him where the hell he got that idea from. I show him my mouthwash bottle and how it says it's antiseptic, which means it kills germs, it prevents gum disease, gingivitis, and all those other oral diseases. But nope, Kevin is not having any of it. He's full of confidence that he knows it's a conspiracy for them to get our money, and all that antiseptic prevents gum disease stuff on the bottle is a lie. Never use mouthwash because it destroys teeth. I'm like, okay, so what about toothpaste? Look, this toothpaste says whitening and that it's anti-cavity. If the dentist and all these companies want to screw up our teeth, then why would they put tooth-harming chemicals in our toothpaste too? If we can't trust the mouthwash, then how are we supposed to trust the toothpaste? Look, the toothpaste and my mouthwash are both made by Colgate. It's the same damn company. Kevin then takes the tube of toothpaste and starts reading the crap written on it. I can see like maybe two brain cells light up about 10 seconds later and he has a eureka moment. I swear to all that is holy that Kevin then said, look here, it says it's made for sensitive teeth, which means they didn't put evil chemicals in it. And right over here, it says extra fresh, which means they only use the most natural and most freshest ingredients to make this. So it's totally natural and good for your teeth. Unlike that lying mouthwash. I then asked Kevin, what if the toothpaste label is lying? like the mouthwash label is lying. He tells me that I don't understand what he knows and that I should trust him about this. Kevin is an automobile expert. He popped the hood of his car that was running and sprayed WD-40 all over the engine and all the other crap that's in there. He read somewhere that WD-40 is good at cleaning greasy crap, so he decided to empty like two whole cans of WD-40 all over everything while that crap was running. A few minutes later, lots of hot black smoke started coming out from in there and and Kevin freaked out. Did he quickly take the key out of the ignition and turn the running car off? No, he ran inside the building, filled a big bucket with water in the bathroom, ran down three flights of steps with that heavy bucket of water, and then poured all that water all over the car's engine. I guess it kinda worked, the smoke definitely stopped, the car also stopped running. In fact, you can't turn the car on now. Turn the key in the ignition? Nothing. No engine sounds, no clicking sounds, nothing. Maybe it needs a jump? No, nothing again. Battery is fine. It's been a few months now and that screwed up car is sitting right outside the same place, getting all rotten and rusty. I told him to save a little money and have a mechanic check it out. Nope, Kevin doesn't want to do that because mechanics fix one thing but screw up your car more so that it breaks down again after a few months and you're forced to pay that same mechanic more money. That's all right though. Kevin is confident he can fix it himself. Because Kevin is so confident he can fix his own car, he walked into an auto zone and asked an employee to give him the tools that are for fixing cars. What kind of tools, sir? All the tools that are used by mechanics to fix cars when they're not working. Kevin walked out of there with no tools, but he was definitely angry that auto zone was screwing with him. They just want his money. A few months ago, Kevin went to visit his uncle in another country. Before he left, he asked me what kind of gift he should get for his uncle. I replied with the usual crap, you know, stuff like clothes, perfume, wallets, or some electronic device. Kevin says, what about a gun? I could buy him a nice one. I'm like, what the heck? A gun? <sighs> okay, okay, say you get one for him. How do you plan on taking it with you to give to him? You know, since you're getting on an airplane to travel there? He says, no problem, it's safe in a holster and I'll also have a gun permit to show to the airplane people. After hearing this crap, I was like, what the heck? You can't do that, you're gonna get tackled to the ground and get your ass beat. You're gonna get your ass arrested, our apartment raided, interrogated for hours, get me arrested. In best case scenario, they're gonna ban your ass from stepping foot inside an airplane, any airplane ever again. You crazy? How do you not know this? Kevin just brushed it off. If I make $100 a day, how many days till I make $200? 
Kevin and I went to Walmart to buy cleaning supplies and crap for our apartment. We go stand in the checkout line and Kevin whispers into my ear, Hey, that chocolate? Is that a Snickers? Can you pick one up for me? I tell Kevin to pick it up himself because he's literally standing right next to it. He whispers again telling me to do it. I'm like, whatever, and I pick it up and put it next to our stuff. Kevin then says that the Snickers should be next to me or that I should hold it. At this point, I'm like, what is it? Do you want the Snickers or not? Why are you whispering in my ear? What's wrong with putting that damn Snickers bar right next to the other crap we're buying? Apparently, Kevin was afraid that the people around him wouldn't view him as the masculine tough guy he thinks he is if they found out the Snickers bar is for Kevin. I pick up the damn candy bar and loudly say, Mmm, I love Snickers and this is for me. Kevin's face turns red and once again, I swear his head was swelling up. Kevin thinks he knows geography. He will say dumb crap like, Florida is north south of New York, Chicago and Atlanta are touching but Chicago is left. Kevin is also guilty of the classic, girls pee from the butt. The first time I thought he was joking, the tenth time not so much. He refuses to believe otherwise because he's very knowledgeable about human autonomy. I'll probably be posting here a lot. My roommate Kevin is a doofus. Sometimes I wish he wasn't such a nice, sweet guy so that I could flip my wig and call him an idiot. These are my favorite stories on this subreddit, just people listing these funny, silly things that people close to them do. And you know, yeah, they're making fun of them, but they're close, and at the end of the day, they love them. It's like a, a nice roast. Anyways, Kevin just sounds like every Facebook mom ever, or like Alex Jones and his and his fans. I will say this though, I, I like Alex Jones because he, he's fun to make fun of and if you watched his um appearance on the joe rogan experience that is a hoot to watch he's he's self-aware surprisingly um even though i don't necessarily agree with his politics he's a funny guy <laughs> Alrighty, this story is called Kevin Sleeps Openly in Every Class, plus a lot more. Well, it looks like I found my new favorite subreddit. Time to contribute. Small high school, a few hundred and change kids per grade. In my class, there's this Kevin who openly sleeps in multiple classes. He's been doing this since I've met him at the start of high school. The teacher would be talking about whatever, and he'll straight up close his eyes and bury his face in his massive bulky coat he almost always wears. When nudged by other students so he doesn't get in trouble, go away. Oh! When actually confronted by the teacher to wake the frick up, okay, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, proceeds to do it again within five minutes. I just had my eyes closed, despite having just been snoring like a steam engine. Being so dead asleep that he doesn't wake up until someone shakes him awake, then one of the above. Bonus items. Couldn't make a half-decent Google slideshow despite being in ninth grade at the time. Stuck with the default eye-stabbingly bright white theme and scattered text boxes and pictures all over the slides. Information content would range from basically nothing to 10 pages worth of text allegedly packed onto one slide. Capitalization and grammar errors were rampant. Most sentences weren't even complete. We were assigned a short, double-spaced, one-page essay asking us to describe how we felt we had progressed over the semester. Instructions were to type it and print it off for submission in class. He comes in the next day with a sheet of notebook paper covered in the most appalling handwriting I've ever seen, and mine is pretty bad. His varied massively in size, with letters taking up half a line and others taking up three or four. All in all, he had made be a hundred words written down. He then has the gall to state that his handwriting is perfectly legible and that the teacher should accept the work. I later found out that his handwriting is actually about average. The reason his essay was so bad was because he had written it in the span of about three minutes while walking between classes, with no hard surface. Keep in mind that this was effectively a half-page essay on a topic that required almost no mental investment and took everyone else no more than 15 minutes to type properly. When we did the Odyssey in English, he finished the book in the night we were supposed to read one chapter. Rather than only saying what was appropriate, he spoiled key information dozens of times. Fortunately, I had also read ahead, but others were not so lucky. His spoilers were often paired with confusing and factually incorrect tangents on his personal analysis.
analysis of the current text and spoil text. Even after confronted by both students and the teacher as to the validity of his claims, he continually insisted that his interpretation was the only correct one. In classes where the teacher requests we keep our laptops away, he will often be slow to slash refuse to put it away initially. Even after that, he'll occasionally attempt to take it out and look at whatever, and acts put upon when corrected. Related, he gets his memes from Google Images. Thanks Rage Comics and Did You Know Memes Are The Crap tries to forcefully show them to everyone else. Polite suggestions that he at least try iFunny and tone down the aggressive sharing are summarily ignored. Related, apparently harangues random girls at our school on Instagram by barraging them with DMs, which are usually requests for a date. Related, tried to present an amateur country balls video on World War II to the history class as excellent study material. The video in question was published sometime in 2011. Looked like it had been animated on a touchscreen by someone with sausage fingers. Audio sounded like it had been deep fried in the very depths of hell itself. Contained painfully obvious historical inaccuracies, stating that Italy had been allied from the start, for example. Was on some Chinese video host site. Despite not having any form of autism or similar disorder, information I extracted from him personally, he very obviously has no idea how to engage with other people socially, showing flagrant disregard for literally every social norm and rule of conversation. If he's within earshot of your conversation and it interests him, he will interject, often mid-sentence. Oh. Has trouble reading the mood, can't tell when a conversation or conversation topic is unwanted. Basically, in capable of carrying on prolonged conversation, more than five minutes, about any semi-complex subject. I'm fairly certain he moved to the United States from his birth country of China only a few years ago, although I haven't been able to 100% verify this. Only solid evidence I have is that his laptop language is in Mandarin, and that his parents immigrated to the US recently-ish. My best guess as to his social issues is that his situation in China somehow led to him not learning social skills like most children do. This this is a stretch, but it's my best theory. Hope you enjoyed my wall of text. I did. Thank you very much. I used to sleep in class a lot too, um, every day in third period. However, I would save it for when I was done with my work, and my teacher was more or less okay with it. Um, I would just, you know, slump over and sleep, and then when I'd wake up, I would be super burpy. Every time I would sleep slumped over in a desk, I would wake up with, like, a lot of burps. I don't know why exactly. I guess in that position, I was swallowing air a lot. I don't know. But <laughs> it was great. I love sleeping in class. It's fun. But I'm glad they clarified that he had no um, disorders or anything like that. So feel free to bully the crap out of this kid. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Bullying is wrong and it's not nice. Unless it's in the form of a Reddit post making fun of someone's lack of intelligence. <laughs> I don't know. Internet is weird. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.